upsetting the nerves, no bad taste. It's a nice, smooth drink. Pour a little in your glass and drink it right down. But be sure and ask for Guzzler's Gin, a nice, smooth drink. <laughs> Here's just what the doctor ordered. A picture that sets a fast, furious, and exciting pace in mirthful, melodious entertainment. You know, I ha I was, it was really quite a thrill to, to uh, get something like that, you know. And over at the Academy, it's a funny thing. As I walked in, there were a lot of people outside and, uh, and someone yelled, Red Skelton's in the crowd, and they all turned around and looked at me. <laughs> Gee, I was so impressed. <laughs> I was sorry I yelled. <laughs> Setting the nerves, no bad taste. It's a nice, smooth drink. Pour it in your glass and drink it right down. But be sure and ask for Guzzler's Gin, a nice, smooth drink. <laughs> <laughs> Drink a little after dinner. <clears throat> Drink some before you won't have to eat any dinner. settle down for a lot of long, loud laughs. For here's just what the doctor ordered. A picture that sets a furious and exciting pace in mirthful, melodious entertainment. Red may be Janet's big heart drop, but to everyone else, he's just one pain in the neck. You're fired, you hear me? You're fired! Fun really starts when Red is tagged as public pigeon number one by stock swindlers who pose as government agents. I solemnly pledge to uphold the principles of the Bureau. To uphold the principles of the Bureau. Through rain and sleet. Through rain and sleet. Till death do us part. Till death do... You sure we're not getting married? I'm a gin man. What? I'm a government agent. Selling phony stocks? I'm underground. That's the way we operate. They made a sucker out of you, and they're still doing it. Guard. Please see that I don't have visitors on Monday anymore. This is piling up. What kind of a signature is this? Mine. Peter Rabbit? Oh, that. It's a nickname. Kids used to call me Peter Rabbit because of the way I had of walking. Like this. Hippity hop, hippity hop, hippity hop. <laughs> Start to finish, there's never a dull moment in the dizziest, whizziest whirl of a lap time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I brought these out in case some of you folks at home that haven't seen the Emmy. And I would like to thank the ladies and gentlemen of the press and also the ladies and gentlemen of the Academy for voting our show twice. One is they liked our show, the is they liked me as a comedian. <laughs> well, you've seen them now, so... Ed, do you want to take them? It was really quite a thrill to, to uh, get something like that, you know. And over at the Academy, it's a funny thing. I walked in, there were a lot of people outside, 
And, uh, and someone yelled, Red Skelton's in the crowd, and they all turned around and looked at me. <laughs> Gee, I was so embarrassed. <laughs> I was sorry I yelled. <laughs> The autograph collectors, they had a cute idea. For the stars, they would let them sign full sheets of paper. And for the bit players, a half a sheet of paper. <laughs> you ever try to autograph a spitball? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> little uh, Richard this week, they came in, they want pet mice. I said, what do you want with mice? They said, they don't brush their teeth, they don't take a bath or anything. He said, hey, don't tell one of them to move over. He got a new buddy. <laughs> They went over to uh, Gene Fowler's house the other day, and they raided his uh, cuckoo clock. This is the truth. He took a little cuckoo out of the clock, so I said, why did you do that? He said, well, I didn't mean no harm by it, you know. He said, I saw the cuckoo in there, and I thought maybe I could get some cuckoo eggs and raise my own clock. <laughs> <laughs> Through the years, the orchestras have played things. <laughs> What's going on out there? Jack Finney. Red. Red, what's happening here? I came over here to do a show. Found no place to park my car. They didn't give me a dressing room. Even the makeup man, he, did, he didn't have my name on the list. Well, you're not supposed to be on this show, Jack. What? No, you see, the show tonight is a shower devoted to uh, the talented artists. Artists, rather. <laughs> Talent artists who have uh, sold a million. So, oh, I thought it was saved a million. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know. I, I'm off. <laughs> You know, he's not kidding about money. He fries bacon in luck so it won't shrink. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a great uh, honor uh, that's been bestowed upon me. And now I'd like for you to meet a fellow that really I'm very proud to be associated with. You've seen him quite a bit on the Ed Sullivan Show. And it's Ed Sullivan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Red, it's mighty nice to see your smiling face again. Really, it is. Yeah, well, that's more than I can say for you. <laughs> don't give me that. Don't give me that smile. You, you know that I can smile. I guess. Yeah. Oh boy. This <laughs> boy's a real Liberace, you know. What are you talking about, Liberace? There is a real serious smiler. Now you're not kidding. You know, the other night Liberace played a concert and his piano didn't show up and he played his teeth for a half hour. <laughs> Here in, uh, in uh, California. Well, I came out to look for some new acts. Some new acts? Say, hey, I know a boy that does a trapeze act and he'll travel. Daryl Zanix, he's named. <laughs> Red, it says I got brought back a lot of regards from New York for you. Oh. Fred Allen, want to say hello to you? Oh, fine. Herb Schreiner, yeah. Tichor, and oh, all okay. of them. <laughs> you know, we, I want you to know, too, that all of us watch your show every week in New York. I think you're doing a wonderful job. And if you're ever in New York, Red, and I know you're coming on soon. That's right. I'll you be ought there. to drop over and be on our show, boss. Well, that's a date for sure. By the way, you know, I bumped into your sponsor the other day. No. Yeah, I got hit by Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I saw those new and they're really wonderful, you see. Listen, uh, you've got a good product, too. I'll make a, I'll make a deal with you. What is it? You send me a Lincoln and I'll send you a bottle of Jericho. <laughs> you throw on a cup of coffee and you got yourself a deal. <laughs> No, Red, I, I want to take this up with you because you've had a lot of experience out here. We're thinking of bringing our show out to California. Oh, what do you call it? The uh, Toast of the Smog? <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I'd like to find out, or you, you can advise me on it, is how the audience out here would react to me live on a stage. Oh, well, uh... Well, there you are. That's, and you know that was done... Without a, without a cue card. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you pretend that this is the toast of the town and you take over and, uh, and, uh, and make out like it's your own show right now and find out for yourself. Is that all right? Certainly. Go right ahead. All right. It's all yours. Cauliflower McPug. Oh, Here he is. Right. Come on, 
up here, Paula. So I want to talk to you. Nice to see you, Ed. Oh, sorry, nice to see you. Oh, what's the hand? What's the hand, boy? What's the hand? <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah? Welcome to the Ed Sullivan Show. <laughs> Don't rub it in, boy. <laughs> now, Starfire, there are a lot of athletes here tonight. Tell, tell all of us, how do you keep in shape? Oh, am I keep in shape? I do a lot of work down at the gum. Uh, <laughs> at the gym. The gym. <laughs> I, uh, 24 hours a day, I'm training. Uh, when do I sleep? Mm -hmm. When I'm fucking <laughs> You know you're always in perfect condition. Oh, yeah, far. good condition. Because you do keep a strict training schedule, oh, good, right? Oh, good, strict. Oh, good, yeah. Do you drink? Oh, no, no, no. Smoke? No, I don't move. Go around dancing with the gals? No, and you know that tougher than fighting. <laughs> about your next fight? Well, I got a big fight coming up on television. I get $15 in funeral expenses. You know? <laughs> you fight on television? Yeah, my manager got it all fixed up for me. This is gonna be a good one, boy. A real television natural? Who's your opponent? Betty Frenet. <laughs> you know what, Ed? What? I have never been able to win a fight so I could say on television or on radio, hello, Ma. Walk up to the microphone and say, hello, Ma. I'd always bring my ambition that it's going to Do it right now. <laughs> Let me have that microphone. Do it here. right now? Yeah. I can. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Ready for net, or you can hit like a mule. <laughs> Line. Wait till the <laughs> Tonight we're going to have a little educational feature, and we hope that you'll all be very much interested in, and it has to do with traffic. Now I'll give you a number to call in just a few minutes. I can't give you the number now, as I've done this before. I told you that uh, we'll give you the number during the program, and I and as I say, we don't have time to give you the number now. <laughs> but we do it later on in the program. So get your pencils and get the lead out. <laughs> Ready to take down this number that I'm going to give you, which I will give you in just a few minutes. Now, you can write for this book. It's a book on a new game called Pedestrian Polo. <laughs> and uh, all of the uh, principles of the game as soon as we tell you a few of the things that you have to look out for. There are different types of pedestrians. First, we have the out-of-towner who comes into town and he waits for the light to change and finally decides that he won't cross because of the traffic, and he goes the other way. <laughs> Down the block about nine times, and he <laughs> anywhere. In fact, he shouldn't have even come to town. <laughs> the writer that wrote that shouldn't have even handed it in. <laughs> now we have a fellow that starts out here who is anxious to get over to Joe's place, and he jaywalks. And after he comes out of jaywalks, he becomes an S-walker. <laughs> now an S a man who walks like that and then goes back over to Joe's place. <laughs> now, to be able to uh, be a good pedestrian, you must be able to jump three ways at the same time. <laughs> There's another writer bit that does. <laughs> now, the one thing that you must always remember are when you're driving. Now, there are different types of new things coming out every day. We have the new bumper that has the rubber stamp on the front of it. When you hit a pedestrian, it says, kill in this town. <laughs> Another thing we have is the floorboard that's made out of glass so that you can apologize to the pedestrian after you run over. <laughs> you must be sporty about this game at all times. <laughs> now, there is a three lights. The traffic lights are very important in this game. Now, first is the red light, and then the uh, orange light, and the green light. Now, the... <laughs> Well, it looks like it's green anyhow. I'm colorblind, it don't make any difference. Anyhow, now, the, is, uh, the principle of these lights is when the green light is on and the orange light comes on, that means go fast so you won't hit the red one. <laughs> now, there are different types of uh, rules that you must follow at all times and uh, playing pedestrian polo. First, the pedestrian. Don't ever be too kind of pedestrian. You see one, get him. <laughs> Now, this is open season, and we have a score. If uh, you hit a man, that is five points. If you hit a woman, that is 15 points. If he's carrying a baby, you add a half a point. Now, 
The other day, I hit a guy who was wearing a tam, and I didn't know what the score was. <laughs> In fact, I don't think he did either. <laughs> now, if you hit a man and knock him down in a sewer, that's a hole in one. <laughs> Knock him through the air, knock him over 50 feet, that's called a birdie. <laughs> now, one of the important things to remember while painting pedestrian polo is to keep your windshield clean, because you may miss a pedestrian completely. <laughs> this is very heartbreaking, you know. <laughs> now, I, I, I suggest that you would use Tide. Tide is very wonderful for washing all glass wear. This is, by the way, if you haven't figured out, is the commercial part now. <laughs> this is the side of a window that has been washed with Tide, and this side has not. You can see the difference. <laughs> yes, there's a glass in there. <laughs> now get ready to take this number down. I'm going to give it to you any minute now. I'm going to give you the number. I can't give it to you just now. Now, uh, one thing I'd like to call your attention to is what the safety zones are for. Just in case you hit somebody outside of them that don't count. If you hit someone steps out of the safety zone, knock them back in before they get there. <laughs> Now, a lot of accidents are caused because people really don't know how to drive. Now, coming down here tonight, there was a car in front of me, and I'll tell you, this poor soul didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> it was an out-of-towner. You could tell by the license plate. We come to this red light, a stoplight. She stopped. How do you like that? <laughs> now, I'd like to call your attention about some of the things about Tide. Now, Tide has a new bumper that we're putting out now, a Tide bumper that has a brush in it. This is so when you hit a it sprinkles a little tide over them, and then a can of water comes out and sprinkles the pedestrian, and they get so mad when you knock them down and they get dirty, this way they'll get up and thank you for knocking them down. <laughs> now, tide is also, here's a car before it was washed with tide, and here is the same car after it had been washed. <laughs> if you're very much interested in this, uh, I would like to call your attention, not only does tide get clothes cleaner than any soap, and uh, not only does it get glassware sparkling bright, but it gets voice prints dazzling bright. And now we uh, <clears throat> have, uh, what's this? Hand cues? What's this? <laughs> what's that? It is kind to your hand. Oh, tide is kind to your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Again, boy, I some days, boy. Now look here, Willie. Yeah, I'm your pal. I, I don't mind helping you out of these messes. Yeah. But I'm an MP. I know that means my I, pal. I it keeps sticking my neck out. Look, I had to get on KP again. They got a new general coming in here, and I don't want to go over that hole and drive around that brass. And look, I got in trouble with one of them guys. You know, he came up to me and I didn't salute him. He says, "How come you didn't salute me?" So I, I didn't know I was supposed to. He says, you see these two stars? Don't you know what that means? I said, you got two boys in the service? <laughs> Where does it go anyway? Well, I went on a, a, a furlough. You mean furlough? No, I went too fur and stayed too long. <laughs> there ought to be something to eat around here. There ought to be something around here somewhere. <laughs> That's a colonel? <laughs> Why, that poor little fellow, I doubt if he's even lean yet. <laughs> I remember him when he was six foot tall. What happened to him? Oh, that, that's a Texan with all the hot air out of him. <laughs> Hey, you do me a favor, will you? Sure. Now, I'll, I'll see you, they, uh, you get a ride into town anytime you want to go into town. Sure. You do me a favor. They're going to make me cook for that new general. And will you do me a favor? I have some do. of the boys on those details to unload some of that garbage up here, will you? <laughs> I will make the finest salad you ever have. <laughs> okay, I'll take care of it. Good, boy. You do that to me, will you? There must be something to eat around here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never get rich. <laughs> <laughs> you never get rich.
Right you are, man. Nice uh, you are. I'm going home. I wasn't so busy. <laughs> oh, just a moment. I'm Ooh, sorry. Here, I'm let sorry. me wipe that off for you, sir. <laughs> well, let's see what we have here. Oh, no, 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 no. I no. beg your pardon? Go right ahead. Go right ahead. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Ah, mighty fine. Mighty fine. <laughs> hey, you'll be cooking in the office's mess in no time at all. Oh. Uh, let's carry on, old man. Carry on, man. Carry on, Willie. Carry on, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> Say, that ain't bad. <laughs> I wish I were. No, I'm not cutting. Don't you realize the general is coming in here for lunch? Don't you realize that there'll be a thousand men here for lunch? Yes, and don't you realize I have to prepare the food and I don't know what to cook? Just don't know what to cook. <laughs> I mean, meat is so high now, I just don't know what to cook. Yes, yes, I know that the meat is very expensive, but yeah. you, you see, that's why I'm here. We're going to have a, a barbecue sergeant? <laughs> I think what would be very good would be to have a, a large green salad. A mixed green salad for a thousand men? Oh, let's not get sick <laughs> Good heavens. Well, we'll get it all fixed up then. I'll go out here and get it for you. All right, you all go right ahead. Bring it in. If I've got to cook it, boys, I'll bring it in here. There we are. Hey, did you get that down at the dump? Good, good. That's all. This will be nothing in old time, boy. Well, there we go. Horse, put it in the rim of the last thing I do. <laughs> <laughs> 
shop and get him some elevator shoes. Every time he runs, his stomach dribbles. <laughs> Say, where's the dancing girl? What happened to Sue? Hey, Sue! Sue! Georgie! Hey, hey bartender, who's that hombre? Why, that's Hondo, the fastest man on the draw in the West. Don't be silly, I'm the fastest man on the draw. <laughs> <laughs> now, even John Wayne can't do that. <laughs> I figure any time a prop gets a bigger laugh than me, it's gotta go. <laughs> One spur. What's the idea of that? Well, I figure if I get one side of the horse going, the other side will just follow her along. <laughs> yeah. What do we got today? Well, what'd you like? Oh, the usual thing, the usual thing. Mm, yeah, just line them up there. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's looking at you. Sure. I told those boys we needed lines here, but they said this would take care of it. Well, here. <laughs> yeah. That's mighty dry gin. Six months, uh, did I? Why, what have you been doing? <laughs> I'm pretty hokey, but even I ain't gonna tell that joke. <laughs> oh, come on now. I ain't seen you for six months. What have you been doing? Here it comes, folks. <laughs> Ask me again. All right, I ain't seen you for six months, did I? What have you been doing? Six months. <laughs> <laughs> Never be a success. There's too many moving parts. <laughs> Dead eye. I haven't seen you in quite a while. Yeah, that's because I ain't wearing that dress. <clears throat> Say, gal. Why don't you and me go for a little ride out on the range tonight? Well, why the range? Why, because out there seldom is a discouraging word. <laughs> Give us a kiss, gal. Who's with you? I got... Hmm? <laughs> oh, come on, gal. Dead eye, you don't kiss like you used to. I know. The rings came early and took all of the curl out of my plucker. <laughs> hey, Dead Eye. Yeah? Keep your hands off her. She's my girl. Yeah, you wouldn't say that if you were down here. I'm up here. So. Now. <laughs> We got time to shoot you here, but you gotta die on another network. <laughs> Anytime a prop gets a bigger laugh than me, it's gotta go. <laughs> Did you have to shoot him? Yep. I could have starved him to death, but it wasn't quite as visual that way, you know. <laughs> Hey, 
game of poker. Why, I thought you boys had been playing Scrabble or something. Oh, <laughs> poker. Yeah, I'd have put that line in, but we're running a little late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate to take advantage of you strangers playing cards, but... <laughs> my bag of peaches. <laughs> Mind if I show you a trick, stranger? Here, let me show you something. Here, hold on there. Take a card. Any of them. Uh, why did you do that, Dead Eye? We needed him for the game. Oh, yeah. Shane! Come back, Shane! <laughs> hey, Dad, he's a tough man to kill. You see, he drinks a lot of Jeffertal. Let <laughs> me... I think the Indians are coming. Right free alive. <laughs> he thinks the Indians are coming. Good heavens, the town is surrounded by Jeff Chandler. <laughs> we'll hold out, but first, we're going to have a little intermission. Bring in prisoner. Oh. <laughs> you realize that this is the first time the Indians ever went out over the cowboys in television? <laughs> Cut me down, boy. We're running late. Yeah. Chief. Oh, trying to get away, huh? <laughs> Spare my life. And I'll make it worth your while. I'll get you a job posing for pennies. Me, great white father. Oh, I don't care about your social life. Oh, a pony Indian, eh? Get <laughs> down. See the three things the We pony... make wow, then we kill you. Oh, I get it. Then it's powwow right in the kisser. Right? <laughs> yeah. Boy, you'd have a nice little collection here. Anybody I know? <laughs> Sam! <laughs> what happened, Sam? <laughs> Don't tell me that you got a <laughs> gabor, too. <laughs> Nice cure for dandruff. We smoke pipe. You make peace with spirits. Good. Wait. Put on filter. Screen out irritants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what are you smoking, mucklucks? <laughs> Time for you die. Oh. Time for take scalp. Uh. Time for beanie. <laughs> I should have taken the Indian's part. I can see that now. Don't kill me. I'm too young to die. I'm too old to I'm at that awkward age in between. <laughs> Look, I'll do anything for you. Please. I think you watch your stuff. <laughs> Please, Chief. Don't kill me. See, I'm stalling till the, uh, till the soldiers get here. Please don't kill me, Chief. Right. Me spare your life on one condition. How's that? You join tribe, marry my daughter. Me become an Indian? Yes, you join tribe, me give you big title. Oh? Call you Crazy Legs, All-American Indian. <laughs> that Indian's part. Quiet! Yep. Come in, brave! Oh, don't burn me at the stake. You come. No, chop my head off. Yes. Although a hot steak's better than a cold shop, I guess. <laughs> Ain't this exciting? I know hokey, but exciting, huh? <laughs> carry on, boy, carry on. <laughs> Come my daughter and see white man die at stake. Yeah, kids, I got a lot at stake. Well, <laughs> bangles? Bangles <laughs> and beads. <laughs> Butter, new dance of death. Dance of death, kids. <laughs> Too bad I'm tied up, kid. <laughs> fire! Bring on torch for fire! Bring on the torch for the fire! <laughs> Go scalp the prop man, he's too soon! <laughs> <laughs> Her Royal Highness, Cleopatra. Your Highness, I understand that you are in the market for a new slave. That's something out of stock. This one must be different. This is different? You want to play cowboy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By you, this is a slave? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> you can touch in better shape. 
King Tut, King Tut. <laughs> King Tut's in better shape than you are, and he's been dead for 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that, you royal nastiness. Feel this muckle. Wait a minute, it's over here. Oh, there it is. Feel right there. Feel it. How's that for a muscle? Feels like a ward on a rubber band. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fun. Say, two can play at that little game. <laughs> yeah, move it over. <laughs> What do you think I got down here, a duck? <laughs> All right, throw it over here. <laughs> Holy Christ. <laughs> you dress in the center, you like to... Like, <laughs> you kiss my ass, I'm going. Like a Hollywood knickerbocker, no ballroom. <laughs> if that wasn't your knee, I'd marry you. <laughs> now, call it, Buster. Call it, Buster. Love to. Only one. <laughs> promises, promises. <laughs> Only one can play at that. Yeah? Yeah. Perhaps I could use them around the palace. Oh, I hope. <laughs> Party pooper. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps I could use them around the, par the palace. Palace. Uh, can you swim with a broom in your mouth? What for? I need someone to clean out the moat. This is, B this is 51 B.C. B.C.? Before coffee. Well, it hasn't even been discovered yet. Oh, can Better reason for not drinking it? Ha <laughs> <laughs> uh, Not a goddamn word. <laughs> oh, um, uh, let's see. Uh, I wish I was with you all. Uh, let's see if you're healthy enough for housework. All right. Um, stick out your tongue. I do not do windows. <laughs> Fix your mirrors. <laughs> um, Overhead? Oh, <laughs> Stick out your tongue, honey. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, oh, kiss me. No, not here, here, there, there. Stick it up. Further. Further. <laughs> I know him. <laughs> oh, A tongue like that, and all he wants to do is hump. What are you going to do? <laughs> Bad breath. 
Well, sir, like they say, it's a psychiatry. Get it out of your system. I'm sorry, I wasn't being rude. It's all right. Say, I thought I'd you for a minute there. Say, maybe you could help me out. I'm looking for a hobby. Well, I'm not it, Fuster. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could have been, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Well, hello. May I interest you in a demonstration? What do you got in <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> what do you have? Well, we have everything in the photographic line. Oh, really? Oh, yes, we have a dark room. Well, let's go to the dark room, see what develops. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get a negative answer. Hmm. You positive? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't being rude, ma'am. Believe me, I wasn't. Oh, good heavens. Those flash bulbs, I bet I broke them. I better see if I broke them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good heavens, there goes the man. Poor girl, break these bulbs and get in trouble. That's a good one. safety strap. Oh, yeah. I'm not... Well, what is it? Please, here. Now, please sit down there. We're showing these to everybody in the interest of automobile safety. I guarantee after you try one of these straps, you'll never want to ride without one. Really? Yeah, three ones. Does that feel good to you? Yeah. It huh? would be nice for the kids. They couldn't get out of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't squeeze out a bomb and that's no, canyon, huh? I didn't hear solid. We nailed them, Ray. We got <laughs> Listen, honey, I'd like to talk to you about our $895 do-it-yourself trailer kit. What do I want with a $895 do-it-yourself trailer kit? Hey, you're almost through, aren't you? Almost, almost. Can I help you? Yeah, if you Give want to. Give me the hammer. There you are. You got a nail? Right there. All right, you nail. hold it. Oh, Ready? morning, Sadie. Hi, honey. Ah! <laughs> oh, boy. What's the matter with you? Oh, nothing. Just oversensitive, I guess. Uh, hey, oh! <laughs> you know, Sadie, you're the kind of girl I'd like to take home to smother. <laughs> I said to everybody, don't you? No, no. Huh? Say, it's uh, all finished. Would you like to go in and see it? I'd love to. Hmm, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're up against the wall. Hey, where's the door? Well, I put a door on here somewhere. Well, there's got to be a door somewhere. Maybe it's on the roof. Well, let's go look for it. Come on, there's see a big window, window in the back. We'll crawl through the window. I know there's one here. That door somewhere. That's wonderful. That's, that's a good idea for a door. That's cute, huh? Yeah. That's wonderful. Just close it up. Nice, huh? Yeah. <laughs> nice place for the sink, too. Yeah, well, it, it's convenient. There's no pipes, though. No pipes. Yeah? It comes in handy. You can wash your hands and feet at the same time. <laughs> well, I like your little eye, ain't it? Yeah. yeah. Where's your bed? Where do you sleep? Let's see. Where'd I put that bed now? Oh, uh, oh here. Here, here. Of course, I don't sleep much, you no, know. No, no, I don't sleep much. You ever get lonesome here? You no, know? you get acquainted with yourself pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you got a radio too, huh? Can I put it on? Turn it on. Okay. On. Get a little music for it. <laughs> what are they playing? Unlike a cheap. 
keep record of ebb tide, don't it? <laughs> hey. Oh! I must have crossed the wire. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I don't mean to be personal or anything like that, you know, but how do you turn on the radio? Like everybody else, you plug in the toaster. Oh. <laughs> Forgive me for not knowing that. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Sounds like Dave Rose, don't it? Yes, yeah, sure does. <laughs> How about a little drink? A little drink? Hey, now you're talking. I got some cold tomato juice. Hey, just stop talking. <laughs> Here, just sit down. Make yourself at home. There you are. <laughs> you pull up a chair. <laughs> Oh, in it, <laughs> Not only that, but Coolsy. Well, here we are. Yeah, you'd think now that we got a sponsor, they wouldn't cut that tomato juice. Stop. <laughs> 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 you ought to be drinking flying cards. <laughs> Look, I'll get a straw. I'll get All right. you presently here. I got a bit of news. If I could just find it here. Um, was here a fortnight ago. <laughs> I, uh, we have uh, a new way of uh, going to condense the news for you, you know. Going to bring it right to you. There's a long article here about a man who gets a divorce from his wife because she talked too much. It's a big one of our meat packers here. But uh, instead of taking all that time to do that, we will abbreviate it. Uh, here's the news. Meatpacker cans tongue. <laughs> oh, what happened to my monocle? That thing, I'll have to use this till I find it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, and I'll bring you the correct time. When you hear the musical note, it will be exactly two o'clock. <laughs> we put it that way in case we were a bit off, you know. <laughs> Listen for the musical note. time it is. <laughs> Here's a uh, bit of news that came in a while ago. Oh, it's coming in again now. <laughs> it's a, uh, uh, oh dear me. Looks like we're having a bit of trouble in egg wipe. Egg wipe. E-G-Y-P-T. Oh, Egypt! Egypt! <laughs> thing if I could only keep it in there. It's clearing up. <laughs> I, uh, what we have here, you can see, is uh, a couple of the uh, egg white Egypt uh, battleships. Uh, they were handed to me by uh, Rook. <laughs> the uh, joke that I had about that has been cut. <laughs> Time for tea, time for tea. <laughs> Little tea never hurt anyone, you know. <laughs> there we are, just slice that around, you know. Little tea never hurt anyone, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta sweeten it up a little, you know. Little tea never hurt anyone, you know. Oh, careful, don't get nervous yet, boy. Don't get nervous. There you are. No 
I see here that the uh, Kremlin is going to pave their streets with wooden blocks. Looks like the boys have gotten their heads together. <laughs> Joe, Stalin is trying to find a serum that will make him younger. Well, that's not possible, but if you leave it up to us, we'll see that you don't get any older. <laughs> now I would like to tell you about our American movie. Tonight, this movie, it was not shot underwater. It just looks that way. Uh, this picture has murder, robbery, terror, hate, revenge. It's a story about a boy and his dog. <laughs> he stars Errol Flynn. He plays two parts. <clears throat> Both the brother and the sister. <laughs> Still no good. Huh? <laughs> Hello, are you there? Are you there? Would you get me Fort Knox, please? In Kentucky, yes. United States of America. We don't have a Kentucky in England, you know. <laughs> Hello, Fort Knox. How are you? <laughs> and now I would like to tell you about our sponsor. Our sponsor is good old Cliveden's Crumpet Juice. Cliveden's Crumpet Juice comes in different sizes. Now, here's the small size to carry around, and there's a prize in every package. Now, here's one in this package here. It's a genuine, uh, genuine... Well, I really don't know what that is. <laughs> It's a genuine, isn't it, though? <laughs> now, that's that in there. And now, in the mix size, we have a special size that comes with that. Gotta put my tea away, you know. <laughs> Tastes like <laughs> With this size, you get a prize. A package comes with this one. Every box has a surprise. What do you do? Nail it down, Sam? <laughs> Everyone has a surprise. <laughs> well, there's supposed to be a surprise in there somewhere. <laughs> Well, there's a sm Ooh, yo. <laughs> Time for tea. Time for tea. Now, then we have the larger size, the big, large of <laughs> juice. And with that, we give you a large prize. And this contains all of the vitamins that you'll ever need. Uh, would you step out, please? Would you please? Thank you. Wow. Uh, that also comes in the plain wrapper. <laughs> Good morning, Lord. Be behead. Oh, how are you, Ben? Nice to see you, Ben. Thank you. That's Big Ben. <laughs> we, uh, now I'd like to call your attention. Cliveden's crumpet juice makes old men young and young men younger. I hope you keep that in mind. I'll show you what a wonderful product. <laughs> For school. <laughs> Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, for the benefit of you who have never seen a broadcast, we're going to take you backstage and show you some of the important things about television and radio both. Uh, open up, would you? Oh, there it is. First of all, I'd like to call you, this is a microphone, see? Now, and they use them right out in the open in radio. You couldn't see them on the stage, but on, in television, we had them concealed. See, up there, there's two of them. And then I have one on me, hidden. <laughs> Testing, hello. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the most important things in television and radio is the sound effects, and I'd like you to meet the sound effects man. Oh, would you come out, please? Uh, uh, what was your name again? Ray Erlenborn. Ray Erlen... Ray Erlenborn. I'd be better off with a number. <laughs> I've seen better looking heads rolling down bowling alleys. <laughs> Would you uh, like to go into our sound effects now and yeah. show them? Well, here we have our marching men effect. Oh. Formerly, we had two more rows of pegs there, but they were 1A, and we... <laughs> Marching men. Company halt. <laughs> New recruits. Oh, this guy's got to go. You know that. Here we have.
have our horses' hooves department. Oh? We use coconut shells cut in half in a box like this filled with gravel or one filled with dirt, oh. whichever the story happens. <laughs> You know, this guy has possibilities of developing into a total stranger. <laughs> Go ahead, will you? You'll speak. notice that the coconut shells are equipped with straps so the horse won't lose a leg in the middle of broadcast. Yes. <laughs> Wooden bridge. of our recordings that we mm -hmm. play. Now this one here, an automobile crash. I'll, I'll play that one for you right now. So until next week now, no! <laughs>